Romans 5, 4, actually 3. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. What's up guys, my name is Vasily Beletsky. Um, I'm here on YouTube just breaking down some revelations that were given to my life that are deep and that I've been working on for like the past few months. I don't want to sp spill out something that I just got today or yesterday. I want something that has actually been produced over time that's able to saturate your guys' um, minds and spirits and hearts, break through all those walls that's, that some of you guys have and maybe even help you grow. In the knowledge of Christ. So together today we're gonna to be talking about persecution, struggles, the reason why we need to have suffering in our Christian walk. Now Mark Moore is one of my really good friends. He's literally, he's such a, like he's somebody that I always look up to. He wrote this book, it's called The Joy of Suffering. I'm gonna link the Amazon link right in the, in the description. He wrote this book and this book really touched my heart because it outlines one important factor. The factor is that through suffering, we grow deeper into the revelation of God. You know, he uses this one perfect example about couples that go through really hard times. Whenever you're a couple, for instance, if you went through cancer or if one of you guys went to war or something like that happens, tough time, your marriage is on the line, like everything's just up in the air. You don't know if the person's gonna be alive the next day. It's just crazy, but during those times, something happens, something breaks off, and you guys are able to grow even closer together. See the Holy Spirit being in a relationship with us, we being His bride and He being our bridegroom, we also grow with Him. Whenever tribulations hit, it puts us into a position to seek Him even more at that time. See, when my life whenever all of a sudden, everything that, for instance, I'm having everything going perfectly, I feel like I'm growing, I feel like everything's happening right, and all of a sudden, Boom, everything gets destroyed. For instance, when I just got married, I'm talking about a few months right after my wedding, I had $8,000 and I was like, I need a new car. I was driving a beaten up 1996 Honda Civic and I need a new car. And so I, I called my uh, father-in-law. We started working it, working it out. We found a, a new Honda Civic 2016 for about $7,500. I paid it. We made some more money, we put it in, fixed it up, and I was driving a new car. I was on the top of the world, but I had almost no money in the bank. I'm, I just put all my money into this car. And no, it wasn't a good idea, first day of marriage, getting a car, but I was also 21 years old. Not the smartest and brightest kid out there. So, just putting it out there. <laughs> but, two weeks later, after I fixed up this car, everything's working perfectly fine. Two weeks later, I'm driving uh, from, I just applied to nursing school. I'm driving home from nursing school. Everything's going great. I just got married, got a, got a good, uh, what's called, got a good job as an LPN that time. Got a great wife, got a new car. I'm like, I'm having the best life ever. And all of a sudden, this guy in the yellow Jeep pulls out right in front of me and boom, my car gets totaled. The guy in the Jeep probably got like a few scratches and he drove off because he didn't even have a license plate. And here I am <laughs> at the conflict of my life. I just got married. Everything just was going so good in my life. And then all of a sudden, boom, I don't even know what to do. I call my wife and my wife, my wife is, is kind of freaking out. And I come home and I'm still in a buzz, like at, at this buzz of, I did not know how to handle this situation because I never had to handle the situation. Usually I'd have my parents to help me. And I call my dad and I'm like, dad, I need a car. And so he's like, here, take your old car back that you were driving, because I gave it back to him. And so I took the car, I'm driving, and I'm like, God, I do not know what to do. And so I go to bed, and I don't remember, this This. This thing still brings tears to my eyes because of how how much impact it had in my life, or where, when I found out who God is in my life. So we get to, what's called, we, we're getting closer to go to bed, and I'm just like, God, I do not know what I'm doing. I'm just freshly married, but I know that whenever something's going wrong, I have to look to you, I have to turn to you. So that's what I did. I just turned to him, 
that night and I just said, God, I need your help. I wasn't close to him. I wasn't doing anything right. I need like nothing bad in my life, but I wasn't that close to him. But I knew that when something is happening bad, I need to look at him. And so I did. I looked at him. And so I went to sleep. And as I'm sleeping, sorry, this is, this is this story is bringing a tear to my eye. As I'm sleeping there, I'm literally, get, I literally get woken up by a voice and it says, get up, look into this and this account from your old job. You have this much money, in my, this much money in there. And I'm like, what? And I get up and I run to the computer. I open it up. I go to my 401k account in my other job. And there's a notice from the day before it says, Vasily, we need to know, because it's been about three months since I quit my job at that point. Then I went to a new job and it says, Vasily, we need to know what you transfer this money to, because otherwise, of what's called, it's going to get lost. And I'm like, whoa, select the checking account. It was six and a half thousand dollars. The car only cost me three and a half thousand dollars to re refix back up. And I sit back and my wife is sleeping and I'm looking at everything. And I'm like, God, from now on, I know that whenever something hits, whenever some struggle hits, you're the one I look to. Another story, for instance, is whenever I was sitting, um, we were supposed to buy a house. And I know I've told the story before on Instagram, if you guys, if you guys were following back then, um, we were going to be buying a house in May of the, of last year. And I was, I needed to have $25,000 on the pit, on the table Friday afternoon. This was Thursday night. I had $10,400 and I, I don't know. God told me to go buy the house. So I was just trusting him. Everybody, everybody in my family was just like, what are you doing? This is crazy. Don't be doing this. But I, I knew that he had a plan and somehow I just said, okay, God, I'm trusting you. And I went into my room and Sarah is like, Vice, what are we going to be doing about this? How are we going to be handling this situation? I was like, babe, he showed us the vision. He showed us that he's going to put everything into his place. I'm trusting in him. Let's go to sleep. And that was, that was my prayer. God, I'm trusting you. <laughs> that was my nightly prayer that night. I'm trusting you because I don't know how I'm going to get there. And I, I go to sleep. I fall back to sleep and I, I wake up in the morning. I'm about to go to work and I usually check my bank statements and everything else. And all of a sudden there's $25,400 in my bank account. And I'm like, what just happened? I wake Sarah up, it's 5.30 in the morning. I'm like, babe, look, there's this much money. Then I look, my IRS uh, tax return just came in that same day out of nowhere. All of a sudden, the two stimulus checks from me and my wife came in at exactly the same time. And then the last one was, um, what's called, my, my investment quadrupled over the period of that week. And it all got deposited into my account. And I'm like, God, I, all I did was trust you, Lord. And you once again persevered. You once again stepped up. See, the, the struggle in my life was the fact that I didn't know what to do. I was stuck between a rock and a hard place. One place I'm gonna be stuck in this place in my old house. The other place I'm stuck without a car and I'm newly wed with no money. Both of the places I I find that that's a big struggle and a lot of people have those financial struggles in their life. But here I was and I was like, God, I did not know what to do. And he, as the loving bridegroom that he is, he came in and he showed up and he started answering the situations that I had no answers for. See, God can do that in your life too. If you see that you're going through a struggle, stop turning to people, stop turning to, to pastors and family members and all these things. Yes, they're good for you, but stop looking at people for your help. Start looking to God. If you do not look to God for help, how else will you get there? If he points people to you, like for instance, I've had people that called me out of the blue. What are you going through? Because God's put you on my heart. I'm okay with that. But stop relying on different people for your help. Jump straight to God. He's giving you the ability to walk into the throne room of boldly. He's giving you the ability to come into his presence and say, God, you are the great I am. You are my father. And you said that whenever I ask you, you will be giving me an answer. Whenever I knock, you will open the door. So God, I'm out here and I'm knocking until you open this door because I know that the kingdom of God is violent and those who are violent take it by force. This is the key to your, to your life with God. When you're going through a struggle, whenever you're going through a time, stop trying to figure it out by yourself stop trying these situations you sometimes forget to look to the person that has the best answers for you in that situation and that is god so i urge you every single one of you that is in here i know there's not any crazy cool cool scenes in this video or anything else it's just me talking to you but i urge you listen listen up 
Stop what you're doing. If you're if you're having struggles in your life, stop trying to find answers through your friends, through your family members. Look to the one who carries all the answers to every single one of your questions. He the, he wants to help you through every one of your suffering. He wants to be there for you. Christ already went through all the suffering so that you do not have to. And I ask that the moment that you step into the presence of God, the moment that you put put yourself in front of Him. Be honest, be truthful, speak to him like you would to a dad. Speak to him like you would to your best friend. He's there for you and he wants to have an intimate relationship with you. So on that note, guys, I love you all. Peace out, be blessed. Oh, and wait, um, like and subscribe. Also, if you guys are going through a struggle or anything else like that, um, and if this message speaks to you, say in the comment section. I like responding to comments. I like talking to you guys, maybe even giving you a few things that have helped me throughout my life. So I hope that, I hope that I can help you out as much as I can. Peace.